If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, William Morales. And on today's show, I have Jay Connor. He is known as the Private Money Authority. Jay, how are you? Thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. <laughs> oh, my lands, Will. I'm doing <laughs> fantastic. I'm so excited that you invited me to come on here with you and talk about my favorite subject, which is private money and private lending. Well, it's becoming my uh, my favorite subject, too, especially when we, we did uh, have a little chat before the recording. So, Jay, tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur early on? Did you know that you were going to be the Warren Buffett of private lending? <laughs> my lands, no. Uh, when, I, when I graduated from college way back when, I went to work for a restaurant chain for a couple of years, and that just about killed me. And then I went to work for a corporation for a number of years in the mobile home business. But I knew if I ever got out of the mobile home manufactured housing business, I wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, and start investing in real estate, single family houses. I've done commercial uh, shopping centers as well, uh, but primarily single family. So it wasn't until I was, let's see here now, I'm going to date myself, but it wasn't until I was a about 40 years old that I said, you know what? I'm 40 years old. I want to make my own rules. I want freedom. I want the work when I want the work. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it with whom I want to do it for as long as I want to do it. <laughs> so I was about 40 years old when I really started focusing on the path. Uh, so I was a late, a late bloomer. But folks on the path of being my own person, my own entrepreneur. And um, so that's when I started focusing on it. And um, so, yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, right now, um, you know, we've been full time in real estate investing since 2003. So uh, we've been doing it for quite a while. Were you nervous going out on your own? Uh, did you, you know, you had the nine to five before, you know, you're getting that steady paycheck, as they say. Were you nervous going out, uh, out on your own? Did, you know, I would, any say, I would say the better adjective would not be nervous. The better adjective would be <laughs> excited. Ah, okay. Um, you know, just, I mean, it was like the world was opening up and I had, I, I mean, it's like, now I can do whatever I want to do, right? And um, so I wouldn't say I was nervous. Uh, I've got a very, very strong faith in God and trust. Mm -hmm. And I believe I'm going to be provided for because of my faith and trust. I'm a hard worker. So I didn't know how it was going to turn out. We never know how things are going to turn out until we actually live through them. Right. But I put my plan together. So, you know, nervousness comes about when someone doesn't feel prepared right i think Good so point. i was more i was more excited uh for the opportunity and uh, opportunities than anything else no, sounds good. Did you get the support that you needed? Was the support there for you once you, you knew you were going to be on your own? You're going to be, you know, you're excited about this new challenge of being an entrepreneur, getting into the real estate business. How was the support? Or oh, I've, never, <laughs> I've never been asked that question. And I've been on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of podcasts. That's a great question. So I had the support. This is a writer downer. I had the support I needed because I sought after the support. Mm. Like nobody came knocking on my door saying, hey, Jay, let me support you in your new venture, right? It's like friends. Nobody's going to come knocking on your door saying, hey, Will, I want to be your friend. So I got all the support that I needed, but I sought after the support. I sought after people that had already blazed the trail 
They had already been in real estate investing. So I sought after fantastic mentors and coaches to work with to where I didn't have to like make stupid big mistakes by being able to work with other people. So yeah, I had all the support I needed, but I went and looked for the support. I remember one time I, I saw, uh, I think it was Jim Rohn. Um, I'm a big fan of his. Tony Robbins studied under him and Jim Rohn said, I, I think, it, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it's like in the Bible, if if you seek, you shall find. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, you search, you find, you ask, you, you know, you'll get the answers. And I, and I, I, I'm just like you, Jay, I really believe in that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in the power of karma and just treat, treating people the way you want to be treated. So I love that story that you sought for the, for, for your uh, mentors, your guidance, you know, you weren't afraid to be out there and say, you know, for lack of a better word, make a fool of yourself because you didn't care. You knew, you knew, what your path was. And I love that, that you knew it. So let's talk about private lending, right? So you got into real estate in, was it 2003? Correct. So how was, uh, can you talk about your first deal? How did that go? <laughs> For those Man. of you that, that happened, if you see this, Jay is smiling. So I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> that first deal, that yeah. first deal has got more than one lesson out of that first deal. So I'll give you the short version. So my very first deal, all I had done at that point in time, now this was 2003, February, 2003. And all I had done at that point in time was I had a lot of experience in the manufactured housing and mobile home business, helping people own a home. I'd right. done that for years, but I never invested in single family houses and, all, and I had never rehabbed and renovated houses. So my very first deal, I'd, all I'd done is read books. So I'd read a few books about being a real estate investor. So at least I got a little bit of education before <laughs> starting, right? So I, I read in one of the books to look in the, now this is going to date me, Will. This is going to date me, okay? <laughs> so it said, look in the Holmes Magazine. Now, Oh, for I remember your, those. Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. For your list, for your listener that does not know what a Homes magazine is, back in two thousand three years ago, the local um, board of realtors or and realty companies they would publish monthly magazines in your local area with colored pictures of all the listings of the houses yes. and little write ups about them, and they were in color and the list price and all that kind of stuff. So I went and got, so this is prior to the internet days. Uh, so I went and got a copy of the local magazine, a, a local realtor magazine. And I looked through and that book told me to look and find the ugliest, nastiest smelling house I could find. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it. I found it. Okay. Uh, so I'm right here in a small market, Moorhead City, North Carolina. Our total target market is only 40,000 people. But today we do two to three deals a month, averaging $71,000 a deal per wow. month. Right. So those numbers work out. Anyway, so I find this house on Mayberry Loop Road here in Moorhead City. It had, been on the, it had been on the market for nine months. It had had over 60 showings. It was a bank-owned property and um, no offers. I said, sounds like my house. That's what my, <laughs> real, that's what my realtor was telling me. Right. So I went and looked at it. I'm so excited. Now, it was a piece of junk, let me tell you. Now, but, but it was all cosmetic. It was all cosmetic. So anyway, I, I put that house under contract for $50,000. Now, bear in mind, how did I fund it? Back in 2003, if you could, like, you know, fog a mirror by blowing on it, <laughs> they'd give you a line of credit, unsecured. Right, right. So I had a $250,000 line of credit unsecured burning a hole in my pocket. And so I went into this house, I put it under contract for 50,000. The, re the renovation was gonna be about 50,000. So I'd have 100,000 in it. And the after repaired value at the time was $140,000. So not a huge big deal, but first deal, you know, I'm all excited about it. Well, hey, look, I knew my wife, Carol Joy, was gonna be all excited about this first deal. She hadn't seen it. So I took her to the house. She wouldn't even get out of the drive. She wouldn't even get out of the car. 
What? <laughs> I said, why don't you go look at this house? She says, you see that neighbor? You see that neighbor? I'm not getting out of the car. I said, well, to be sure, my dad will be all excited. So I went and get my dad. We went to lunch. I put him in the car. I took him to the house. He got out of the car, walked up to the driveway, steps inside. You have to like crawl over trash everywhere. Right. He looked at me, he says, Jay, have you lost your mind? I said, oh, I no. don't know. I'm getting ready to find out. So anyway, I renovated that property. Well, what are you supposed to do when you go to sell a house? Put it, list it with a realtor, right? Sure. So I listed it with a realtor. In January, so it went, it was on the market for 45 days with zero showings. And oh. it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I had it, it looked brand new. It it was all staged and everything. And so I read in one of them books, if you put an ad in the paper, advertising owner financing, your phone will ring off the hook. And it did. I put the ad in the paper, my phone rings off the hook. I talked to this guy named Earl. Earl says, I want to go look at this house. I said, well, Earl, it's sort of hard to find. Well, it really wasn't hard to find. If you come down this side of Mayberry Loop, you're looking good. You come down that side of Mayberry Loop, not looking so good as far as the neighborhood. Right. I said, Earl, you meet me at the Seaco gas station and you can follow me into the house. Earl followed me into the house. I took him in. He looked around. He absolutely fell in love with it. He looked at me. He says, Jay, I'll give you an $18,000 lease option deposit right now. I didn't know what a lease option deposit was. <laughs> right. But the buyer did. And my daddy told me when somebody offers you money, take the money and you'll figure it out. Right. I said, Earl, you write me that check for $18,000 option deposit. And we'll figure this out. Well, long story short, I was a mortgage broker at the time and I was able to get Earl financed. I got him a mortgage. He had a mid score of 585. I cashed him out and uh, profited $40,000 on my first deal. And I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> wow, that's, an, that's a great, great story, Jay. I love that. I love the fact that... Uh, you got your first deal pre or you, you sold your first deal on creative financing and you, and basically you were like, okay, we'll figure it out from that. See, that, and that's the thing I noticed, Jay, I mean, talking to you right now is that you took action and then you figured things out later. I think a lot of us, I know I've done it where we do this analysis paralysis and we just keep on going and going and then no deals happen because we're just analyzing the crap out of everything. Um, so let's talk about that, right? So you 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 got your you sold your first deal on creative finances, I want to finance lease options and all that. Did you do more of those deals uh moving forward? And, oh, and yeah. so, so talk so, about some of those and then your transition into private money, like what made you switch into private money? And then we'll ask you, what is private money? I know that's a lot to take, but let's talk about your creative deals first. Sure. So I actually, Will, didn't start doing creative deals until 2009. I okay. didn't know anything about creative deals. I mean, I mean that, that, that lease option deposit that Earl <laughs> offered me, thank goodness I, I, I was able to get a mortgage for him and apply that $18,000 to his closing cost and purchase price because I didn't know what rent to own a lease option was right. until 2009. So Learning about creative financing and learning about private money really all came about at the same time. And here's how, and here's why. You were From doing, I'm sorry, Jay. So you were doing more conventional? Um, oh yeah, I was, I was relying yeah. on the local bank. Right, right. I was relying for the, my first six years from 2003 to 2009, I relied on the local bank to fund my deals and I just put them in the multiple listing service and cashed them out. That's all I knew to do the right, first six right. years. The right. first six years. So then you, you transition into more of the creative side six years later. So did you take the first lesson of that 2003 uh, lease option deposit and then you realize, hey, there's more deals to be done this way than the conventional way? Because like you in, in your bio, uh, uh, folks, he, uh, Jay talks about just being at the at the mercy of the bank. Um, you know, you're talking about you got to put maybe 20% down, or if you put less than now, now you, now you got to pay pay what private mortgage insurance. So you know that adds to your cost. I, that's how I look at it. So talk about the transition. That again, this is an amazing story. Sure. So here's how it played out. So 
I just didn't wake up one morning and say, <laughs> I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go raise some private money. So here's what happened. In fact, this difficulty, this challenge, this pain was the biggest blessing in disguise in my business because, you know, quantum leaps, growth really comes from challenges and being able to press forward and find a better way to do your business. So I remember it, Will, like it was yesterday. <laughs> in January 2009, again, from 2003, until the beginning of 2009, I relied on local banks to fund my deals. Right. So I uh, remember I, in January 2009, I called up my banker and it was actually from this very landline phone. You know, we actually still have landlines in North Carolina. <laughs> no, we, we, North we, Carolina? No, no. <laughs> Jay, we do too here in New York. I mean, do you? <laughs> yeah, because there's, so, you know, and the funny thing is, Jay, we'll get back to your story in a second. When you get a cable package, they still include the phone. And I'm like, why would I need a phone? Oh, you can use it for business. No, nah, that's okay. I'll stay with my cell. If I could always get a Google number or if I have to get a, a, a different, a, a, a second phone for my business, I'll do that than have a lamp. It's a go ahead, Jay. Sorry. That, that, sorry. That's good. And Jay, and folks, Jay showed me his landline. So this is incredible right there. <laughs> so anyway, so I, so I called him, I called him a banker, right? And I had had this conversation, Will, many times for six years right. with my banker. I had two houses under contract to buy. I told him about the deals. They represented over $100,000 in profit that I was going to make on those deals. And my banker went quiet on the other end of the phone, <laughs> which is never a good sign when your banker goes quiet and won't talk to you. Right. And anyway, he finally cleared his throat and he says, Jay, I'm sorry to tell you, but the bank has closed your line of credit and you have no funding available for your deals. Ah. And it's like, I said, Steve, what are you talking about? What do you mean I don't have any funding? I said, I've, I've made payments perfectly for six years. I got an 800 credit score. Why are you closing my line of credit? And he said, and bear in mind, I only had a million dollars. I only had a million dollars that I was, you know, rotating. Sure. And um, I said, what happened? He says, well, the bank's just not loaning money out of real estate investors anymore these days. Well, you see, first of all, I wish I had known that prior to putting two houses <laughs> on the contract. Right. And Will, in 2009, in North Carolina, in 2009, when you put earnest money down, you couldn't get it back. In 2009, the laws have changed since then. Sure. But I mean, like, I'm stuck, right? My second thought was, so I hung up the phone. I hung up the phone with Steve, and I sat here for a second. And I tell you what, Will, I had a new mantra come to my mind that I have repeated to myself ever since. And my new mantra that morning when I hung up from a banker, that mantra became, it is impossible for you to fail until you choose to quit. Mm. It's impossible to fail until you choose to quit. And, and, and quitting was not an option for me. So I sat here for a second and I said, you know what? Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Right. So who do I need to ask for help in this situation? So I thought of my friend, Jeff, who lived in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time, he was real estate investing. We were good friends. We went to church together at different events. Okay. So I picked up the <laughs> phone. I called Jeff. I told Jeff what had just happened to me at the bank. Jeff says, well, welcome to the club, Jay. I said, what club? He said, the club of losing your line of credit. My bank cut me off last week. I said, well, how are you going to fund your deals? He told me the phrase I'd never heard before, private money. And I said, what's private money? I never heard of private money. Right. And so I learned about private money and what it is. And within less than 90 days, what a blessing. In less than 90 days, I had $2,150,000 in private money available to me from private lenders for me to make offers and buy houses. And by the way, those two houses I had under contract, I closed on those two houses nice. with private money, did not miss out on them. <clears throat> and since that time, Will, I've never missed out on a deal 
for not having the funding. So, you know, if it hadn't been for that difficulty. So today, um, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we got 44 private lenders. You don't need 44 private lenders. Start with one or two. Right. 44 private lenders funding our deals. We got about eight and a half million dollars in private money that we moved from project to project to project. I got about seven houses going right now simultaneously, right. you know, all funded with private money. I get my rehab money up front. I get a check up front. I never take money to the closing table. And it's just been the biggest blessing. If it had not been for me getting cut off from the bank and choosing not to quit, you and me, Will, today would not be having this conversation. No, no, I definitely agree. I love the, again, I love the fact that you sought, again, you you, you sought out for help and you found your friend and he told you, hey, you know, private money. So so for those who might not know what private money is, can you explain quickly what what are the what's the gist of private money? Sure. So private money, first of all, is not is not hard money. Private right. money is not equal hard money. Hard money is typically a broker of money. They, they've raised up, they have a fund, they loan money out, that hard money out to real estate investors, and the hard money lender or brokerage has raised private money for their fund. So who's a private lender? A private lender is a human being. A private lender is an individual, just like you, just like me, that loans us real estate investors money from either their investment capital, just their liquid funds, investment capital, and or money from their retirement accounts. Mm. So learning about and establishing a relationship with a self-directed IRA company that has account holders that have retirement funds in their self-directed IRA is huge because first of all, when you run across somebody in your network that has retirement funds and they're not happy with their rate of returns, you want to be able to introduce them to your relationship that you have with a self-directed IRA company where they can transfer their funds penalty-free, tax-free, and then they can invest their funds with you, the real estate investor, and they can earn unlimited returns per year, penalty-free, at least tax-deferred, and depending on the type of retirement account, they earn tax-free. I got one private lender that has earned $65,000 a year from me, our company, tax-free because of the type of retirement account. So it's really important to have that in place. So a private lender, again, is an individual loaning us real estate investors, um, investment capital, and or their retirement funds for our real estate deals. Now you could, with these uh, individuals, you could uh, set an interest rate or no interest rate. It's all negotiable, right? Instead of where, you know, you go hard money, it's a hard 15% and four points down. And I want the money back in, in two, in two weeks, <laughs> I know six months, but you know what I mean? I'm just yeah. kidding. But yeah. so it's a world of difference. It's a world of difference. <clears throat> so with a hard money lender, if you're borrowing money from a hard money lender, the hard money lender makes the rules. The hard money right, lender yes. sets the interest rate. The hard money lender sets the length of the note, six months, nine months. They set, you know, 14%, 12%, 15%. The hard money lender is going to charge origination fees or points, right. 4%, whatever. So, you know, on average, you, if, you, if you're with a hard money lender for a year, you're going to be all over 20% for a year. Well, in this world of private money, doing business with individuals, they don't set the program. They don't make the rules. You make the rules, right? You set your interest rate that you offer. In my case, I pay 8% and mm -hmm. it's interest only. We can structure deals to where I don't pay any interest and no payments until we cash out. You think that'll help you cash flow? I always borrow more than I need to buy mm -hmm. or purchase and more than I need to renovate if renovation. I always bring them a big check. When I buy, who wants to get paid to buy properties and never bring any of my own money to the closing table? There's no origination fees. Um, and it just really puts you in control of your business and puts you in control of your cash flow. Um, you know, private money is the biggest and fastest way for even a new real estate investor to get a great big check in their checking account 
to fix your cash flow problems. So private money, hands down, I put my stake on the table <laughs> right here. Uh, private money can and will make the biggest impact of anything in your real estate investing business. Yeah, no, I, I could definitely... I mean, I, do, I definitely know more about that because I know I have some friends that do rely on private money. I haven't used one yet. So, you know, it's funny because uh, when I downloaded your book, I started like looking at it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, this is a good read, <laughs> you know. So you had said something before we recorded, which, I mean, r really hit home. If you could repeat that, Jay, when we talked about um, where 87 percent of sellers prefer this type of method so if you could talk more about that versus 13 percent and so this way my audience could really you know hear uh how much the difference of doing private money versus conventional or yeah. or uh, should i say uh creative sure so i learned about private money and that year in 2009 i actually went to my very first real estate <laughs> investing seminar okay right? <laughs> been, in the, been in the business six years and never been to a seminar so I went to a real estate investing training and at that training, I learned about creative financing, how to buy homes. Now we're not in creative financing. You ain't buying them out of the multiple listing service. You're buying them directly from the owner for sale by owners, FISBOs. So I learned about seller financing. In other words, how a seller an owner of a property would be willing to sell their house or their property. By the way, Private money works for commercial deals and apartments as well. We mm. just structure it. It's all the same money. We okay. just structure. We just structure it differently. So creative financing. The seller of a house, in, in and for the sake of our conversation, agrees. And I know you've done a ton of this, Will. You've done a ton of this. Agrees to sell you their property and take a note back and let the right. seller be the bank instead of going to the bank to borrow money. Right. I've bought houses with no down <laughs> payment and zero interest. And the payments go 100% towards principal. That's creative financing. Another big creative financing is buying what we call subject to the existing note. I know you and your audience know all about that, Will. Right, yeah. Well, that's where the seller has a mortgage. <clears throat> they have a mortgage on their property. They agree to transfer ownership and title to you, your entity. And they agree to leave the mortgage in their name and you agree to make their payments. Yeah. And people ask me, particularly new students, who in the world in their right mind would be agreeable to giving me ownership of their property and trust me to make their payments while the mortgage stays in their payments. I mean, stays in their name. It's simple. A motivated seller, seller. That's, looking for, uh, that's looking for debt relief and to get out from underneath that property. So then you have options, you know, creative finance and you get an option on a property. You can do a sandwich lease option in some states where you buy on a lease option you stay in the deal, you turn around and sell it on terms, on lease option, and you sell it for more than you contracted to buy, and you make a cash flow in the middle. Right. That's a longer conversation, but that's the gist of it. Right. So that's all that's all the creative financing. So anyway, those are the big pieces. Well, so I've done a ton of those deals. Um, but now, well, I forgot what your question was. No, no, it, 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 we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's here's That's what a great I story, though. <laughs> but here's what I've discovered with trying and buying houses with creative financing. And, and this is going to lead right into private money. Right. So don't don't miss this. Don't miss this, my friend. So not you will your listener. Right. So. Here, so I have reviewed thousands of property lead sheets. What's a property lead sheet? It's got all the information of the seller and the property, the for sale by owner on it. You know, who's the seller, what's their asking price, how much they owe on their mortgage, the condition, all that kind of stuff. And so after reviewing thousands of property lead sheets, I went back and looked at my statistics over years. And what I discovered, and by the way, me and my acquisitionist, I've had the same acquisitionist for 15 years right. that negotiates with my sellers, my for sale by owners. We discovered that only 13%, 13% of for sale by owners that we talk to are willing and we're able to convince to sell to us their property creatively, like I just talked about. 
Right. Well, what in the world do the other 87% of for sale by owners require? All the cash. And so some <laughs> people, some real estate investors, some seminar trainers teach that you only need private money for the ugly house business, for renovation of houses and stuff. Nothing could be further from the truth. You use private money. Here's a writer downer. You use private money when the seller of the property requires all the cash, regardless of the condition, mm -hmm. regardless of the condition. I buy houses all the time when the seller won't sell to me creatively and it's a pretty house and it doesn't need any repairs. I'll pay all cash with private money. Now I'm going to need to buy it at some discount because I'm not going to totally leverage that property at 100%. Right. I'm going to protect my private lender and have some equity in there so it's not fully leveraged. But the bottom line is, if you don't, you know, I have new, I'll have new real estate investors sometimes say, Jay, I don't need any private money. I don't need any private money because I'm just going to do the pretty house business and just do creative finance. And I go, great. If that's what you want to do, that's a business decision. So do that if you want to miss out on 87% of the deals. I know I have so <laughs> because of like you said it's it owners want you know it's and it's what you said too they don't know you they don't know that you're going to make the payments you know I'm in New York and I try to buy a property in, in Toledo and I'm just throwing this and they don't know who the hell I am so if if you know, cash is king. So I love this, um, Jay, that you talked about just, hey, you know, you get the private lenders, 87%, which is a statistic I have to put down. Um, they want the cash. They want to get out. They don't want to wait two, three, four, five years. They want to go. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll just real quick on top yeah, sure. of that. If you as a real estate investor buy anything out of the multiple listing service, such as a bank owned property, sure. and they're coming back this side of COVID, such as a bank owned property or a short sale or anything in the multiple listing service, of course, you got to have the cash, right? right. So, you know, auction.com. I love auction.com. So auction.com are free leads. You can sign up in your area, anywhere in the nation, put in the zip codes that you want to be notified of any houses that are being put up for auction. But guess what? Ain't no need to get no leads from auction.com unless you've got all the cash. Right. No, exactly. So should we ask family and friends about lending us money? Is that a wise decision at the beginning of our career? Um, do we need some type of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some experience. I mean, can a new investor get private money? Absolutely. So I get asked all the time, and it's a good question. If someone is brand new, they haven't done many deals, or maybe they haven't done any deals. Right. It's very, I mean, it's a, it's a natural question for someone to ask that's new. Jay, who in the world, what private lender in the world would loan me money on a deal? And I've never done a deal. Why would they do that? The answer is very simple. First of all, yes, they will do it. And here's the second reason that they will. Here is the reason that they will do it. Here's a writer downer. If you don't pay the private lender, the property does. Mm. What in the world does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> if you don't pay the private lender, the property does. Here's how that works. If you don't pay them, they're going to get the property. How are they going to get the property? We don't buy, we do not borrow any money from private lenders without securing the promissory note. Mm. So we collateralize the note with either a mortgage or deed of trust. It's the same thing, depends on the state that you're in. Right. And so that gives the private lender the legal right to foreclose on you and get the property in case you do not pay them. And that's why we're going to give them an equity cushion and not fully leverage that property. Right. Now, as far as family and friends goes, that's an excellent question right there, Will. Where are private lenders? I mean, who are they? Where do you find them? 
Yeah, it, it's funny that I was going to segue into that a little later. Um, where do where are the best places to find private uh, lenders? But let's talk about family and friends first, sure. and then we'll. So, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, family and friends is in is part of the first category. Okay. I'll define the first category in a minute because you want me to talk about family and friends. So <laughs> yeah. Some people don't want to borrow money from family and friends. They're scared. They're scared to death that they're going to screw up the deal and the private lender is going to lose money. Listen, your private lender cannot lose money if you do two things right. If you buy right, and if there's, if there's repairs, if repairs are estimated correctly, I said two things, it's really three things. Right. And thirdly, you don't over leverage the property, right? So my rule of thumb is I don't want to borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. Okay. I didn't say 75% of purchase. I said 75% of the after repaired value. So my lands, my wife, Carol, Joy, and I, we got a ton of private lenders that are families and friend, family and friends. Here's the deal. When you come along and you're going to be paying, like in my case right now, I'm paying 8%. Right. Well, the local certificate of deposit at a bank is going to pay maybe a quarter of a percent today. You pay them 8%, that's 32 times more money than they can get in the local bank at a, at a certificate of deposit. Why would you not take care of your family and friends and give them high rates of return safely and securely? Where else are they going to get this kind of return safely and securely? Look, we got family and friends that have written us handwritten letters, thank you letters, how we have changed their retirement years by being able to give them high rates of return safely and securely. Because private money, it's not volatile like the stock market. Right. They know exactly what they're going to get. So you don't have to borrow money from family and friends. Now I'll tell you, Will, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'll have a new real estate investor say, Jay, all my family and all my friends are broke. My people ain't got no money. Yeah. First, of all, first of all, I don't believe them, right? Secondly, you don't have to borrow from family and friends. There's two other big categories of where you find private lenders in addition to family and friends. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. So when you pay your private lenders, are you talking about interest only payments or interest in principal? You do a balloon payment at the end of the term that you guys negotiated. How 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 is that no um negotiated? Sure. And the terms. Well, yeah. first of all, first of all, it's not negotiated. There oh, is right. no, you, there you, is you, no negotiation. I forgot. <laughs> you are in control. That's true, Jay. I forgot about there that. There is no And look, quite frankly, they need us more than we need them. Yeah. Look, there's more money out there on the street than ever before in history. There's $31 trillion right now before the White House prints any more money in the basement. There's $31 trillion on the street right now just in self-directed retirement accounts wow. looking for a home, right? So there's so much money. I'm sorry, Will. What was the question? I got derailed. No, no, no. I, I was asking if um, when you pay your... Oh, uh, interest only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, here, so here's what we do. If the private lender needs payments, monthly payments, quarterly payments, and some do, some are elderly and they're relying on that income right. like to live off of. They don't want to touch the principal. They don't want anything to come out of the principal. They want to live off of the return or help their principal grow. Right. So when we make payments to our private lenders, they are interest only payments. And here's why. It's a win for the private lender and it's a win for us, the real estate investor and borrower. Right. Here's why. When you make interest only payments to the private lender, it's a win for them because they make more money. If you make principal and interest payments to your private lender, you're paying down the principal loan amount, which means they don't have their full principal still invested with you. And therefore, they don't make as much money on that, you know, on that investment. It's a win for us, interest only payments. It's a win for us because when you make interest only payments, 
Interest only payments helps your cash flow. Right. Interest only payments are smaller than principal and interest payments. So we either make interest only payments or we accrue interest. I see. And and at the end of the term, is there a balloon payment that comes with it or you refinance? Do you re ever refinance with a bank to get the money out to pay your private lender or do you borrow another set of money from a private lender to pay the previous private lender? Sorry if yes, my question so, went all over the place. <laughs> right. So the length of the note, since it's the program that we, you create, the right. length of the note is either two years or five years. Gotcha. Okay. The length of the note is two years if they're just using investment capital, liquid funds. Uh, on those liquid funds, I am probably going to be cashed out well in advance of two years. Right. I gotcha. Yeah. Five years, if they're using retirement funds from a self-directed IRA account that they have, I just do a longer term because the returns, the interest payments that we're paying back to them does not go to them. Those interest payments go directly to their retirement account. Mm. So they're not looking for those payments that we pay them to live off of, right? I That's see. going in their retirement account. So when we, so we reserve the right to cash out a note early with no penalty to our private lender when we have a cash out buyer, right? So if it's a smaller amount of money, like thirty or forty thousand dollars that we've just used for rehab, that we just used to renovate a property, we will do a lot of substitutions of collateral. Well, what in the world is that? It's also called a loan mod modification. Mm -hmm. By the way, the private <laughs> lenders never want their money back. They I heard that story. Yeah, I heard that never, story too. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like they say, can't you just keep the money? Can't you just keep the money? Because they know when they get the money back, they're not earning any money on their money right. while the money is sitting in their checking account. So on these smaller amounts of money, you know, you can put private money in a junior or second position. So we'll put private money just for the renovation piece in a junior position underneath the primary private lender. I got so you. to keep that money and keep that note open, we'll sell the property and then we will keep the money. And we will, I mean, keep the note open, keep the money, and we will just substitute the collateral. We will now re-collateralize that note with another property and keep their note open to where they don't have to get their money back. And don't worry, you don't know how, you don't know, you do not have to know how to do that because your real estate attorney handles all that for you. Okay, no, that's good. We're talking with Jay Connor, the private money authority. So what are where are some places to find private lenders? What are good uh, places if you can name maybe two, three, four, whatever you think uh, is necessary? Three. three primary. Okay. So where in the world are these people? Where <laughs> are they? Where are they? So the first category is what we call your warm market. Okay. So family and friends is part of your warm market, but that's not all of your warm market. Who's in your warm market? Everybody in your cell phone is a potential private lender. You've mm. got some kind of contact with them. Everybody on your email list is a potential private lender. Everybody in your social connections, Facebook, and I don't mean your fake Facebook friends. I mean, <laughs> people you actually know your Facebook friends, uh, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Whatever it is. Any yeah. social media, there you go. They Any are, are your friends, not the fake friends. I love that, yeah. Exactly. So those are your connections. You know, who do you go to church with? What groups are you a member of? Who do you play poker with on Tuesday nights, right? All those connections, right? Who Do you have a day job? Who are your coworkers? Who are mm. your peers? Who's your boss? Who's your subordinates? Um who are your high school friends? You know, any, any connection you have, all that is your warm market, right? And by the way, I'm going to give away for free my brand new money guide here in a little bit that will take you through step by step how to talk to these people and exactly what to say. So they're chasing you and you're not chasing them because look, I've never asked anybody for money since 2009. People say, Jay, how you got eight and a half million dollars in private money? You never ask anybody for money. It's simple. I put on my teacher hat. I teach them about private money, private lending, and self-directed IRAs. Now they're chasing me. 
because right. they can't get this anywhere else. Anyway, number one category, warm market. Number two category is what I call your expanded warm market. Well, what in the world is your expanded warm market? Get involved in your community. Join the Rotary Club. Get involved in the, in the Chamber of Commerce. Get involved in your civic groups. Get involved in your local church, whatever, and expand your warm market so you have more connections to use the five steps of getting private money from those individuals. The third category of private lenders are what we call existing private lenders. These are individuals that are already loaning money out to real estate investors. Well, how in the world do you find them? Three places that you find existing private lenders. Number one, you can find them the way I started out. I don't recommend it because it's sort of labor intensive. Right. I hired my real estate attorneys, paralegal, to search um, public records, looking for individuals, not companies, not LLCs, not corporations, but individuals that were loaning money out and being secured by a deed of trust or mortgage. Well, those individuals are private lenders. If you've got an individual name loaning money out secured by real estate on public records, that's a private lender. Right. Well, in 90 days, I found two people. I said, pooey on that. Has got yeah, to be that's a, a long way. way. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so the second way is, and here's a big secret, big secret. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull the curtain back right now. <laughs> Network. So, and here's what I mean. It's easy. So self-directed IRA companies, self-directed IRA companies have networking events. They're on Zoom today. Now this side of COVID, they've opened back up in person. Well, did you know that over 70% of account holders at self-directed IRA companies are wanting to loan their money out to you, the real estate investor? Wow. Okay. That's what they want to do. Over right. 70%. So when you go to a networking event, by the way, Will, do you recommend a particular self-directed IRA company? Uh, I mean, there's a few that I've I heard. Mean, I mean, do you recommend one that's nationwide? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, of course. Okay. Anyway, yeah. I'll leave yeah. that up to you to whoever, whoever you No, I, I would say do. probably N-Trust is one. Um, I'm trying to remember what, what was the other. It was like yeah, I, use, I used. I use questtrust.com. They're out of Quest. Place. That's another one that um, through my local RIA, they talked about them. Yeah. Let me tell you, they are amazing. And listen, Quest Trust, and I don't want to make this show and podcast non evergreen, <laughs> but I will tell you, coming up within the next few weeks, questtrust.com, that's two T's back to back, they have got a networking event. Uh, it's either two or three days. They're expecting 1,000 attendees. And can you imagine being in an event that's got 700 people, 70% of 1,000, mm -hmm. that has money wanting to loan to you, the real estate investor? You think that might be a good event to network at? I so, definitely think so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a place to find existing private lenders in addition to public records. And then the third way is just use my private lender data feed. I've got a software uh, service. We get every private lender loan from public record every month. And we got the private lenders contact information, how much they're loaning out, the interest rate that they got on the deals. So my inner circle uses the private lender data feed that just makes everything simple. So again, that's all coming from public record. So how do you find them? Self-directed IRA companies and public records. That's amazing. Uh, first of all, Jay, I want to thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I mean, my God, I could talk to you probably another two hours. So, um, and before I let you go, just a couple more things. Talk about your Private Money Academy. I know you have, a, 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 I think, a course or, um, or uh, uh, you know, talk more about that. Sure. So I have a membership, a membership site and membership with me live on Zoom twice a month. Mm -hmm. And I've got all kinds of real estate training on the membership site. But the most exciting thing is I and my entire team, we go live on Zoom twice a month, the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month. And I talk private money, just like I'm doing with you right, right here. Right, right, right. And I answer <laughs> any questions that my membership has. 
We've got almost 400 active members right now all across the nation. We dissect deals on those Zoom calls. So yeah, it's a whopping 37 bucks a month. But for your audience, I've got the first 30 days absolutely free. They can check it out. Come on, join me on Zoom. See how they like it. And if they don't want to stay in, that's no problem. Just cancel out. But that 30-day trial in the Private Money Academy membership, uh, your audience can uh, take advantage of that at jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash trial, the word trial. And that'll give them 30 days uh, free in there. Come hang out with me on Zoom and see how you like it. Yeah, no, I'll definitely put that on the show notes. And before I let you go, just again, a couple of more questions. And thank you for that. What keeps you motivated? I mean, I already could tell, <laughs> you know, but what is it that when you wake up in the morning and you know, you, you know, you, you're going to hustle and bustle, what's that motivation for? Sure. Well, let me answer it with a short story. So I was riding down the road. Uh, actually, this was some time back with a really good friend of mine. His name is Neil. We go to church together. We've known each other 25 years. We're riding down the road, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, Will, I mean, just out of the blue, Neil says, Jay, when is enough enough? Mm -hmm. I said, Neil, what do you mean, what is enough enough? He says, well, Jay, you know, you're doing all these real estate deals. You don't need the money. You're, you know, you're training and teaching and coaching other real estate investors how to get all the private money they'd ever want. You don't have to do that. Why, when is enough enough? Why are you doing all that? And I said, Neil, now I understand your question. And he went on to say, he said, Jay, how do you reconcile the scripture in the Bible from the apostle Paul that says to be content no matter what state you're in? How do you reconcile that scripture wow. with everything you're doing? I said, Neil, that's a fantastic question. And here's the answer. Enough is never enough when it's not about you. I love that. Never about you. Yes. So, you know, what motivates me is making an impact, making a difference, serving others, giving back, right? And if I stop doing what I'm doing, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to keep making that impact and making a difference. Our church is very, very important to us. We got a college down in Florida that's very, very important to us. And, you know, I'm starting to get to the age, Will. <laughs> I'm starting to get to the age where every now and then somebody will say, Jay, when are you going to retire? Retire? What in the world is that? What in the world would I do? I don't play golf. I don't go boating. We live right here on the beach in the ocean. I don't go boating. You know, am I going to sit home on the sofa and eat Cheetos and watch Andy Griffith? <laughs> I mean, you know, what am I going to do? I would much rather be motivated getting up, going, going wide open all day long, um, you know, making an impact, doing real estate deals. And you know what? Living the definition of freedom, doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, for how long you want to do it, with, with whom you want to do it. And you set the rules. No, I love that. And if somebody want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? Oh, the best way to get in contact with me. I'm so <laughs> excited is download for free and you got my contact information. Yes, I do. Download I'll put it on the show notes. Yeah. Brand new money guide, private money guide is called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. You can get it absolutely free to put you on the fast track to private money, never missing out on a deal for not having the money. Then you download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide that's j connor j a y c o n n e r dot com forward slash money guide yeah i know i'll definitely put that on the show notes well again jay thank you so much for being on pay to peer real estate show i really really appreciate it hey will thank you so much for having me i had a blast me too and, and i and i tell you what man you are a fantastic interviewer and um, well, thank you much appreciate it <laughs> who knows maybe we'll do it again sometime oh we definitely will i'll definitely uh contact you in the next three to six months believe me <laughs> thank you jay thank you yep bye-bye are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode then head over to jayconnor.com slash money guide that's jconner.com slash money guide 
and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.